inside, which is the back of that uh, first cover. We're going to start with three sheets of cardstock. Well, sorry. No, I don't mean three sheets. <laughs> I don't know why I said that. Um, I'm also having some camera problems here, and I apologize. But I'm going to have to do this while we're... My camera mount, I think, is finally going to give out on me. So we need one sheet, one piece that is seven and five eighths by seven and five eighths. I'm just adjusting my sizes here. And then we need a seven and five eighths by six and a half. Those are our two bigger flaps. Then let's start here with our little guys. So I took one sheet of cardstock and you cut it in half at six. So you'll get one piece and they're all going to be six inches. You need a six by four and a half. Then you'll need a six by five and a half. Then you need a six inch by five. And we need a six inch by five. Oh, so we need two six inches by five. Okay, we're good there. Now we want to start with scoring. And we're going to start with our two larger pieces, the flaps. And one thing to remember is the, the seven and five eighths. See, this is where we want it at the edge here. It's hard to see with the brown. But um, that's going to be a top and a bottom flap. So we're going to be scoring first one on the six and a half inch side at one half inch. I'm using the Artisan Brown still, so I do score more than once. I just found it works so much better. Now our next piece that is seven and five eighths by seven and five eighths. So, you know, it's not really going to matter what side you score on. <laughs> and I kind of did it for that reason. We're going to start with these two. We're not going to score the rest just yet. Burnish our score line. And you can round your corners or do the decorative edges if you like on this one. I'm keeping mine square because of the way I'm going to be um, matting. Again, I'm running into long. it up a little. The, the shorter piece is going to go at the top and our longer piece <clears throat> that was the seven and five eighths is going at the bottom and let's go ahead and miter those corners so we can hide them well under the paper. And I'm going to line mine up to the left hand side, <clears throat> excuse me, leaving just a tiny bit. And then I'm putting the flap right at the, almost to the bottom. I'm turning it upside down. You don't have to. It just makes it easier to work with for me. And you want to match it up so that these guys are perfect. And the whole idea about this, what I have in mind, 
I'll probably put some of the newer recipes that I'll get from my mom because she doesn't have a computer, so she still writes hers. The whole idea is I want a place to put my great aunt's uh, recipes I have that she hand wrote. So I'm going to be, I want to like showcase them. They're just on the three by four, four cards or three by five cards that she had and all those different things. But I want a place to actually mount them. And if they have a back side, I'm going to photocopy them so I can get the front and the back. And I'll probably, you know, make a tuck pocket for if there's a back side. Now closed, that's what we have. So this piece is where we get our six inch. So one thing too, that's what I wanted to check. After we've scored it, I'm going to go ahead and cut these down just to six, uh, five and five eighths. So I'm going to take just a tiny bit off so that they fit a lot nicer. And you'll just take that off the six inch side. So you'll notice that I did put the adjusted measurements in the cutting guide. So you may have already had yours cut down and you don't even have to worry about that. So you have one that's wider and it's the five and a half inch piece and it's your widest piece. It's going to go over to the left hand side on top of the flap. Then you have two that are five, so it's not going to matter. And then we have this one that's going to sit on top. It's another five inch. And then this one actually goes this way, sorry, across the top. So we're going to get all of our pieces scored. So let's start with the one on top, and it's on the Oh, did I cut mine on the wrong? I did. I did. It. Oh, no. One and a half by five and seven eighths. Sorry, let me just lay this down again. So ignore the size that I gave you before. Our scoring will be correct. I just want to double check this. Sorry, I know I should probably turn the camera off, but there we go. Okay, I told you wrong, but that's okay. We got it all fixed. So we're going to start with our five and seven eighths by five, one of the five by five and seven eighths. Do you want this on the five and seven eighths side? We're going to score it half inch. Then our next piece that's five and five and seven eighths on the five inch side, score at one half inch. Everything's going to be scored at one half. I'm going to keep these guys kind of in line because they're not numbered. It's kind of hard to number. Okay, five and a half by five and seven eighths on the five and one half inch side, let's score at one half. Four and one half inch side, we're scoring one half of an inch. Okay, go ahead and furnish all those scores and miter those corners. We'll get that fixed and I'll be right back. Hey, got a replacement screw? 
We're all fixed. I'm sure that was very irritating to you. So, here's the deal. On the book, this is our four and a half, it's now four inches. And we're going to place it out here on this outside edge of this flap. So let me put anything here. There we go. So that you can see it better. I'm going to go ahead and miter those corners. I'm going to remove this. I just don't want to get glue on it. Then the next piece that is now five inches it was five and a half it sits to the left of that flap we have to make them even so it should be flush on my fingers. At least it won't be too bad of a mark. Line that up with the outside edge. That'll be a beautiful spot for a 5 by 7 picture. Then our next piece, it was the 5, other, now it's 4 and a half. Just going to put that right on top of that piece we just put down and see it's going to be shorter so you have that waterfall look <coughs> apologize about the coughing it's just I know it's allergies furnace is on and it's not happening much Okay, now this is going to sit somewhat centered, so you'll have about the same from top to bottom. Oh, we don't have to miter the corners here since it's going in the center. Okay, hey, this is where you need to decide if you want a magnet or not. Because I'm doing the pocket down here at the bottom. You shouldn't have put that away. Hold on. Okay. 
and with the four by six cards, I will be using those. So it'll sit inside the pocket. We'll have a couple of them and it will be enough to, it really will to hold it shut um, once it's in that pocket. I'm not going to be doing a, let me see. It'll be a taller, a little bit taller pocket so it'll hold it neatly. And I'm going to go up the pocket since we use so many magnets on the cover just to show you. So we open our cover first. And that will flip up. And that will flip down. And that is that side. So we're going to move on now to our centerpiece. For that front pocket, what we're going to do is we need a piece that is 8 and 5 eighths by 3. And I'm just scoring the two short sides here at half the inch. Because I am just gluing the bottom. I don't want my tags to get caught on anything. Now this is going to be sitting on top of this flat piece. But I'm not gluing it down in the back, uh, the bottom. Until after we mat, we want to leave that open. And um, it's going to go right to the bottom. Let's put this up. And let's check our fit. So as long as it's matching side by side to side, we're good. Right here, all four corners. I know we're putting paper down. The real, I always do that after. There's no need for that. It's such a habit. Okay, remember, we're not going to glue the bottom until so after we mat. So this will sit at the bottom. We'll be putting a couple of those in there. Looks cute. The color parts are just darling. They'll be matte. We'll mat them. And they're going to serve just dual purpose there. It will hold it time, nice and tight. Okay, we're going to do our sets of pages next. Oh, be careful when folding that up. Right now it is floppy. We're moving on to now that, kind of like our center, but it's still on the left-hand side. I did already pre-make two. Man. Or, well, kind of like two of the pages. So we have one that is going to be a full one, and then we have a second one. A little bit smaller and they call these they have a self hinge basically you want to cut two pieces of cardstock that are seven and a quarter by nine and five eight seven and a quarter by nine and five eight two pieces that are six by ten and five eight two pieces that are six by six and a half and two five and a half by seven. We'll start with the bigger pages. And I'm going to start with the wider one that is seven and a quarter by nine and five eighths. And what we're going to do on the seven and a quarter inch side is we're going to score at one inch. Then on our 6 inch by 10 and 5 eighths, so on the 10 and 5 eighth inch side first, we'll score it one half, rotate, 
on the six inch side, score at one half and rotate once again and score at one half. Then on our six inch by six and a half, so it's gonna look like, like this, it goes this way. So on our six and a half inch side, you'll score at one inch. I think Matt gives us the wrong one, but that's okay. Sorry, seven by five and a half inch one. That's the one we're gonna score at one inch. Sorry about that, but no harm is done because you're not, you're gonna pay for this. So if you just score that right along with me, just press it out because of the matting, you're not even going to see that. But now I'm gonna score on this opposite side. Um, this is going to become this top piece right here. So we want to score, and that's my boo-boo, but you really can't see it. So don't, like I said, don't worry, you're going to cover it with matting. You're going to score it one half, rotate it to the six inch side, score it one half, and back to your six and a half inch side at one half. So we'll go ahead and start with this one since we have this one in our hands. Now see where that score line is, and I kind of rubbed it out, but it's okay because it's going to, um, we're going to cover that baby right up. And then the one that we did score at one inch for our hinge, I'm going to fold that back. This is going to sit down like so. So what I did is I went ahead and used my scallop. Um, corner chomper. And now I'm just checking my sides to make sure everything's okay. Miter those corners. Don't cut through the score line or you might get a hole down there on your paper when you bend it backwards. Now with this one inch folded underneath our pocket will sit on top. I will be putting some matting there so I'm not going to miter those corners. to straighten that out. Using my skinnier spatula, I'm just going to go down in there and make sure no glue ended up where it's not supposed to be. Nope. Now we have our hinge. And you'll want two of those. 
on our larger piece where we scored one inch. So go ahead and fold that back. It looks good. And we'll prepare this one just like we did the small one. Again, my hinge is at the bottom. Again, I'll run my spatula in there real quick to make sure my corners are down and no glue got in there. So, so the thing is, I want a page on the bottom, and you can decide how you want your pockets. They do need to sit. They're going to basically be sitting on top of each other like so. One will sit here, so it will open. Now. When you get to this one, if you decide to have one on the back page, you're actually going to be sitting it, it will sit on top of this hinge. The reason being, we can't put it underneath, but we're actually going to split this. So, what you want to do is kind of decide where you want yours. You may just want it where I'm putting it, and that's okay. So, we're going to do that one first. And I think the easiest is just right up here on top. You want it to match, or you can, let's bring it down a little bit. No, let's put it at the top. You'll want a pencil to mark this with. I had a pencil in my hand earlier. Oh, goodness. Oh, there it is. I'm going to draw a line where that sits. On the other side of the line, I'm just going to cut that. So we're going to make it two. So what happens is we need this to sit here, but we want it to move freely. And we're going to cover that. So I'm going to go ahead and just trim. Let's get the trim around. Just a tiny, tiny bit off. Like an eighth of an inch. Turn it to the same 
side down here so I can get it even. Now come about oh, just a hair. Run your finger now up. There you go. Now that's where you should have that hinge sitting. Just about a finger nails width in between. And this will be mat matted, and that's why I took just a little bit off, so we can be sure to cover it and hide it well. And we fold both of those back. And this, I love to make sure I've got that burnish so it's nice and tight. Then this one will sit right on top. And for this one, I'm going to go ahead. Oh, wait a minute. Nope. This is my top one. Sorry. Because um, then it's going to open like so. This will actually be glued down and this will open. Then I'll put the other short one on last. So we're going to go ahead. Just like gently miter that corner off. Now on this guy, on the side where it's not attached, and I'm just going to take a tiny, tiny bit on the other side, not quite as much. Just enough so we can hide it with paper. that one. Just lay that right on top. Use your work surface. Really even them up. Let's see that will be hidden. None of that will even show. And then my next one. Again, you can decide where this goes. Depending on your book, you can also slide that hinge on the inside. This book, I don't want that, of course, because it's going the other direction. So if you want to make these for other projects, they make great quick pages and they, they lay flat. You don't have to use a magnet because the weight of the paper holds them down. But um, you can stick that inside there. And <clears throat> one thing to remember when you're putting photos on here, if you do, you don't want to mat your photos. Just put the photos down. The extra matting sometimes is a little too thick from experience. And then we, we will be making mats that go on the inside. Okay, let's grab our book. Move everything up on the one side. Now, the beauty of these two is they can go on either side, depending on how you want this to open. So they can go on the right side, or they can go right here on the left side. Totally up to you. Let me show you. So that will open, of course, to my your left. Or if you want it to be more like a book, I'm putting it right up against the spine there. When you make these in all the different sizes, of course, it won't fit here. They can also sit that direction. That's kind of what's nice about these flat self hinge pages. Now they're going to sit oops, right in the center there. They can even go in, in the middle of books. D just depends on where you want them. And then you just put another 
piece of cardstock there and it looks really nice. In fact, I think that's what I'm going to do. Yep. I am I'm going to basically center it. I like that look. Let's go ahead and miter that hinge on the back. Another quick burnish. This will sit with a almost an eighth of an inch on the top, eighth of an inch at the bottom. Okay. I need to pay attention here. Because I wasn't paying attention as I put this down. That's going to be fine. I'm going to cover it. So we're just going to kind of let it dry since I know I used a lot of glue. Thank goodness for cardstock. Now, so I don't have any issues, I'm going to go ahead and measure from the page to there. Mine came out to be seven. And of course our book covers ten. So I'm going to cut it just a hair short of six and seven eighths by the nine and seven eighths. And I'll be using the back side of this one. to work for that other side. Oh, there it is. Almost fits perfectly. Oh, it does fit perfect. So, it's going to be the same length. That's a great fit. meant to be.
Oh, that is down. No, it's not. Where is it? Oh, it is. That's where our seam was. Okay, now I need to get under here because, yeah, I have that little bit of space due to my little glue, boo-boo. There we go. I'm just going to take my art glitter glue because of the nice tip. There we go. Okay, let that dry. I love that. Gives a little bit more of the graphics. This is the back side of it. So we can now go into. I'm going to go ahead and throw our little country gentleman until we're. Help hold that down. There we go. Much better. Well, a little better. It'll be better when everything's got a good mat on it. Now we have cute pages. Okay, let's start on our right hand side now of our book. So I'm really out of practice. I just did this whole segment and there was no recording. I'm going to walk you through this. Oh my gosh. Okay. You need three pieces of cardstock, and I'm going to go ahead and cut them. And I'm going to um, walk it through with you. The first piece is three and a half by nine and a quarter. Now I cut it hair short of nine and a quarter. Then you need this top flap that was six and a half inches by eight and a quarter. So let me go ahead and cut that. So, it's been um, a while. Now, for these flaps, I cut a piece that is, now this is going to be a hair short of six to fit perfectly under your flaps. They go underneath here. And so when you close this, they're the same length. So I cut it a hair short of six by nine. Wilbur, get out of there. She's had a lot of attention over the holidays. And so, <laughs> he's acting up. Now, this is going to be held shut by a, a nice large mat. Let's go ahead and I'm going to score these with you. Well, I'm not going to score them just in case I need to use them, but I'm going to mock score them with you after I take care of Wilbur. He's had a lot of attention over the holidays, and I don't think he's not liking getting the attention. So on this three and a half by, it's short of nine and a quarter, you're going to score the two short ends of half, half, one long end on the three and a half inch side at half inch. Then your six and a half by eight and a quarter on the six and a half inch side, you want to score at one half inch. This is those two pockets, or I mean side flaps. I score it half inch, turn it around on the nine inch side and score it half inch, and then I just mark it at four and a quarter. You're going to cut that in half, okay? So you would fold up these two ends, cut it in half. I'm really sorry about this. And fold up your three sides for your pockets. For your pocket it's just like you did over on this side basically and then you just fold this half inch 
and it's see it's glued at the top so it's a top flap and then your two sides and they will come together almost perfectly get them on there straight <laughs> and there's a nice perfect gap there then this will fold down and whatever size when we go back and we do our mats it will sit there and it will be a nice big mat so you can put a lot of pictures there it's going to sit right there so ugh, gotta watch that like I said it's been a long vacation so I've got to watch my camera now we're going to do the inside of this one we're going to start with the flap at the top and we'll work our way <clears throat> so you want a seven and three quarters by six and a half inch piece we're going to turn this to the seven and three quarter inch side no seven and three quarters by six and a half turning to the six and a half inch side again and scoring at one half of an inch so our next piece is the pocket that sits at the bottom of our our uh, flap and it is going to be the five inch by eight and three quarters again I cut it just a hair short and I need to trim that so it is a hair shorter eight and three quarters it does fit better and we're going to go ahead and score this on the three sides eight and three quarter inch side first five inch side and then again and they're all at half of an inch unless they say different so that one will sit it's going to be that larger pocket that sits on the top of the flap and then on our flat, because it's four and a half inches, you'll need two pieces. You need a four and a half by seven and a four and a half by four. So on the four and a half by seven inch side, score it half inch. Just making sure I got those down. The same. And then on the four inch side, score a half inch. What happens is this is going to overlap. And there's this pocket that will sit on that edge and it is five and a half again short of five and a half just here and we're going to have a pocket at the end and it is three inches wide so three inches wide by the five and a half and you want to score half inch again short side long side short side So those go together with our top flap. We're going to set those aside. Then we did another 9 inch, identical to the other one, 9 inch. We're going to make those two flaps. So on the 9 inch side, you're going to score it 1 half inch. They are 6 inches, 6 inches wide. Nine and a half long, and then just mark half inch. So you'll see how that one's made again. Then there's two little pockets that sit at the bottom, and they are five inches by three inches. Two. Again, just score your little pockets. And half. Half inch. And then to the three inch side, half inch, and to your five inch side, half inch. Okay, let's build the top first. So I'm going to set those guys aside. So I'll start with my top flap. I'm actually going to build this before I put it on the book because there's quite a few pieces to this but I want to make sure because this was that this is that very last piece on the right hand side and it is smaller than that eight center one we just did okay and it fits so I know I'm okay now to build the rest of it 
and we're going to start with our pocket that was five inches. Five inches wide. Excuse me. And I want to check my fit here, side to side. Now, mine fits perfect because I cut it short. Now, if yours doesn't, what you do, you may be asking, well, what do you do if it's too big? You're going to put it in your cutter. And you're going to cut just a hair off. And you're going to put this back in your scoreboard and rescore it half inch. You will have a mark showing here, but you're going to cover it with pattern paper. So it's okay. And that's how you can fix your pocket if it's too wide. Score lines really don't matter if they show where you're going to mat. Because you're not going to see them under the matting. Now, one thing you're going to see I do different is I'm actually going to be putting this to the back side, like so. So it's going to flip up like this, and the reason for that is you won't have to worry about your tag getting stuck. What we're going to do is we're going to put the sides down first, and then we'll pull that up. So you can just leave that down. Just glue the two sides. It fits here at the bottom. Of course you want to make sure that you get that bottom where it belongs. So push your um, push that flap down. It should sit on that score line. mat all the way down. You just can't avoid that seam and then your tags get stuck but now this will be a nice smooth. So we have the, the little flap now that goes over the front and we're going to check it first because we want it to be the same width as our pocket. Mine looks okay. I'm going to check the four inch by four and a half inch piece. Make sure they're both the same size because you can trim it now, you just can't trim it later. Then our pocket, the three inch one. Let's see, oh, it's this way. Sorry about that, guys. Well, I don't know how to take that out of the recording, so. <laughs> Um, I will see if we can bleep, but we've all heard that word. Um, it, you know, like I said, Wilbur is testing everybody's patience now that Christmas is over, and he's been getting a lot of attention. And he just ran down here to my studio with my husband chasing behind, and that was the voice of him. <laughs> Frustrated with what Wilbur is getting into, which is everything. Like I said, the last couple of, well, all weekend, he's had all the attention. Now, see, that's going to sit there, and then you'll have, we'll have some mats that sit there to hold it flat. Um, he's had lots of attention. Oh, what's going on with this? And he's not getting it now. It's 
sometimes you got to get that air out is the problem. There we go. Let's see if that works. Can like burp in the bottle. This has been one of those albums because of the holidays. I meant to get done sooner. That um, it didn't happen. So after we get the inside done here, I will go ahead and get this loaded. Of course, you'll know it then. Um, there'll be the second part. So after this construction, there'll be part two, which is just going to be the finishing of the matting and our decorating. So this has our pocket. And burnish that again. Another thing, Wilbur has decided to chew up all his cloth toys. So he has no choice left. And we've been buying the ones that Um, trying to buy him the indestructible ones. So he doesn't have as many toys left, but it's his fault. Um, he keeps chewing them up to get the squeakers out. And um, you know, I'm going to have to do decorative corners on there because I bent those corners. And it's his fault. I'm just going to take my quarter rounder and round that since I kind of smashed those corners. And this is our four inch side one that went on the opposite side, smaller one. Our tags will hold that shut and then we'll have a tag in here. Now we can add this to our book. Again, I'm going to do it upside down. So my book is upside down. it more up with this outer edge than the inside where there he is getting into stuff where the fold is. Wilbur, no, leave the garbage can though. I mean, he's had a lot of attention, more so than normal. Yes, more so, so than normal. Okay, there's that. Now let's go ahead and build our pocket. Again, go ahead and burnish those two ends. We're going to build the little pockets on these also. Either ma measure now to four if you want to use your four inch or just your little tick mark in the center. this will work since mine is a little big or I could trim it and show you but I'm going to see if this will work. Let's 
go ahead and miter our corners just like normal. That's what I'm going to do. I have this flat. So I'm going to fold that one in, fold that to the back, fold my side because mine's a little bit too big. So I'm going to have two of them at the back side and this is the flap. So I'm going to start with these guys. Holding them in place. Okay, let's do our second one. The hinge needs to be over here to the right side. Let me not. No. Oh, this one is a hair bigger. I didn't get my marks completely right. I'm going to trim. Oh, yeah, it's just a hair. Sure is. There's my mark that I couldn't see. So I'll probably do the same thing with this one. Which is okay by me, actually. that side in now that's going to be quite a bit too big so I'm going to take about an eighth of an inch off I'm going to put this back into the scoreboard. This is the one I just cut. I'm now going to rescore the half inch. Score it on my new score line. Now this one actually fits perfectly. So I don't have to wrap my pocket at all. But I can if I want to. I think I want to so they match. Now they match.
Oh, except. <laughs> oh my gosh. So I did this totally wrong. Um, why did I do that? I measured it the wrong size for this side of the book. Okay, so we have a change in the works here. Wow. Down like so. So, here's what we're going to do. Save these. We might need them. We're going to have to remake this. I'm so sorry. Oh, my gosh. Okay. And I don't want to, to um, cut this out because we've already made the top. So, no harm done. Let's just go ahead and cut these at 8 and 5 eighths by 6. But these are still usable in other places. So, you know, if you want to stick them, I'll, sh I'll show you in just a minute. Let's go ahead and do this 8 and 5 eighths by 6. Ugh. program here. So let me show you something really quick. So these are not a big loss because look, they will also go like on the back here of our pages. So you can actually use them. Um, this one, I know we've already done the matting, but you could, you would just put something pretty over there and it will sit. So they're not a total loss. Again, you can sit them here. Gosh, that's pretty cute. So I, yeah, I'm going to use it inside of there. So I am going to glue this on the back side. Oops, because we don't want to lose the use of these. I'm going to tuck, tuck that inside of the back page pocket. Making sure no glue gets out on my page. And there we go. Now we've just added another flap and element, an unexpected one, to our book. That holds that shut, and I'll do the same here. Oh, no, I won't because it's the opposite direction. So definitely can go here on the back of the page if you want, or you can cut that off and stick it inside of a pocket. Wow. So our newly cut 8 and 5 eighths by 6, we're going to score half inch, half inch again. Now here's the only difference. This is going to be now 7 and 5 eighths. Oops. I'm going to fold mine in half to find my center. And it's not quite three and three quarters, so I'm just going to use the mark that I have a little bit over, making sure this time I cut That one comes out to be about three and seven eighths, and three and three fourths. So have, let's just cut these both now with the half inch down at three and three fourths. Okay. I have scraps that are three inches. So I'm going to go ahead and cut these just on my small cutter at four and three quarters. Again, not quite. Four and three quarters by three. 
And I have another one up here. Four and three quarters by three, and we're going to remake these the exact same way. I'm just going to grab this and put it there to hold that shut. Oh, I do want to show you something with with this pocket. So this pocket that I have that doesn't fit. See how it's sitting here? Again, we're going to have mats that will hold this flap down. Our tags. So, so we'll have one on each side that will help hold that down also. Now let's do our half inch scoring. Two short sides and one long side. First pocket and check. Perfect. This one goes this way. It's quite the mess. Okay, they're both great fits. Sorry to make this video longer. Whoa, what you got? You know, he got a fetch where it launches the balls. So what does he do? He tears the balls apart and he throws around the little pieces in the air. You should see it. It's hilarious. So Mike, why did we bother to buy you this toy? I think the grandkids loved it more. They just laughed and laughed how the ball would uh, shoot out it. Our granddaughter that's not quite three, she thought it was the best thing on earth. And then to chase those balls. Wilbur. It's with the mobs done, chewing everything apart. So I am going to wrap that bottom again to the back, just not the sides. the same. Now just make sure though, hinge to the right, hinge to the left.
tarnish everything. Well, for a minute there, I thought I did them upside down. If I had done them upside down, I'm just going to put them on. I'm down. <laughs> but we're okay. We're okay. So one to the left and one to the right. Yay, it fits. Oh, my word. But that's okay. I got some other cool pockets inside of that other pocket. Then, let's see here. I know we've got two. Well, maybe a longer than that, but we'll get those made. So one will sit here. Try and find some scraps. In fact, the side, this will be more the size. One will sit here, and one will sit there. The mat, tags. And that will hold that shut, and then we'll have that nice, I'll put him here for right now, that one with, we'll have the one that holds that one shut. And there we have the construction of our Spring Farmhouse al uh, folio, and now I will be back in video number two with the decorating. So now you can get it made, and I'm so excited because I've been trying to get this done since before Christmas <laughs> and it just wasn't working out. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and um, watch for number two.